Welcome back to the Traders Network Show. David, all right, picking up where we last left off, yeah. we're talking a little bit about public-private partnerships and the importance of it for economic development. You're an analyst. You're on almost every network out there. You, uh, you're you a ground zero at Bell Point and, and the things that you do there. Tell me what, how public-private partnerships are important for economic development, for, for, for the private equity market. Because no one side can do it on their own. Certainly the government uh, has proven they can't do it on their own. Corporations can't do it on their own because they have to partner with government. If we can get those two minds to meet, and what I find interesting, we were talking about this earlier, is in some of these rooms back here, some of the biggest decisions on the planet are taking place for right. the next 10, 15 years on how we're going to solve some of these very immense problems. You know, it makes you wonder why, why haven't, hasn't this movement moved sooner? You know? uh, gosh, I don't think anybody has the answer for that. I think the main takeaway is that it's starting to move. Maybe yeah. we're late, but it's actually starting to move. And this turnout today and, and probably tomorrow is a testament to that. Yeah, you know, I, I can't help but think that social media is playing a large part in, in, in creating an accuracy voice to shed light on social impact issues that normally would go unheard. And it's what's driving a lot of this stuff you know, to the surface, sustainability, corporate social responsibility. We're hearing these impact yeah. on a daily basis for organizations and consumers are echoing the same thing about and being mindful of what they buy, how it's made, and who it comes from. It's certainly true of the younger generation because they think about what they buy and they want to buy a product that represents not just that it's a good product, that it represents their ideals and what they're striving for. So ESG is certainly the future. Yes. There was a time 10, 15 years ago where it would actually hurt the bottom line. There's actually a lot of evidence to show that it's helping. Back then, triple bottom line RO, tri triple bottom line ROI was a, with a, it was a unicorn. It was a mystical thing. Today, it, thought about it. today it's a real thing. The millennials are driving that. They're demanding it out, out, of, out, of, out, of, our, out of our doors. Of our you're, even, you're even seeing the broad platforms out there, the fact sets of the world, the Bloombergs of the world. They actually have screens in there to help you identify that. And it's, it's a part of every conference call that I, that I go on. You even saw today, we had news today that, uh, that uh, Google was listening to their employees. Their employees were demanding a better response on, carbon, on a carbon footprint, a path to 2030 where they could be carbon neutral. 20 years ago, management wouldn't even be listening to that. Today, it's very important. You know, uh, earlier today, before you got in here, we had the, uh, 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 the vice president of, uh, and the vice president Managing Director and Head of Sustainability and Impact Investing for Bank of America here. And I got a chance to interview her, and she's, they, she echoed that impact and the, the, the sustainability aspects of where our climate and where our environment are going are factoring now into their investment making decisions. As an analyst, from where your vantage point is, is that, is that happening is it more more frequently? I'm certainly looking at it. I'm certainly looking at, at how it affects the bottom line. But to my surprise, it's actually sometimes a net positive. And you just mentioned Bank of America. Brian Moynihan made an announcement that they're actually moving up their pathway to a minimum wage of $20. That's actually coming a year earlier. That's a big surprise to Wall Street that they're taking this tax uh, right now. So it's, it's, it's a wave that's happening. It will continue and it will continue on for years to come. You know, I think we should talk more about this. I know we got some other guests and stuff coming out here. We do some more networking. But let's get some more uh, talking points and come back. We'll meet up in a little bit. Sound good? You got it. We'll be right back at a, for the commercial break. You're watching the Traders Network show. David Nelson, Matt Bird. We'll be right back. The 2019 Greenwich Economic Forum is brought to you by Bridgewater Associates. Meaningful work, meaningful relationships. Churchill Asset Management, Nuveen a leading provider of senior and uni trench debt to middle market companies. Ropes and Gray, bright past, brilliant future. Aurora Capital, inspiring partnerships. And Gramercy Funds Management, we are emerging markets. Special considerations to Bank of America, life's better when we are connected. NOAA Private Wealth Management, a leading wealth and asset management service provider in China. Go Tai Jinan Futures, a leading brokerage firm for commodity futures and financial futures in China. China Industrial Securities, a comprehensive financial group providing full spectrum financial services in Hong Kong. And Titan Advisors, built like a hedge fund. Special thanks to the Financial Times and Greenwich Business Institute for hosting us. And thank you to all the sponsors who helped make this event possible. We'll be right back after these messages don't go away.